Hey everybody, Mark Agnesi here for Gibson Guitars. And today, I wanna to take a few minutes to talk to you about originality and what it means to play authentic. You know, for 125 years now, Gibson's been shaping sound across generations, genres of music, and genders, all the way back to the turn of the century with Orville Gibson's innovations in mandolin building, through the 1920s with Lloyd Lohr's perfection of arch-topped instruments, to our fabulous flat tops of the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, which helped shape sound across all genres, to our semi-hollow body and solid body instruments of the late 1950s and early 1960s, which helped define the sound of rock and roll. Gibson's been innovating the whole time, and we want to talk to you today about some of those innovations. First, the one I got in my hands, the big daddy of them all, the Les Paul. This single cutaway carved maple top design originally came out in 1952 and is iconic to rock and roll as the name that it bears on the headstock. In 1960, the uh, introduction of the Gibson SG with its double horned body. It's never been out of production. The only Gibson solid body guitar to always be in production since its creation in 1960. We have the mouse-eared F-hole semi-hollow body design with the ES-335, 345, and 355 that grace so many albums of the 50s and 60s, all the way to Ted McCarty's most iconic designs in the futuristic series like the Flying V and Explorers, some of the most copied and imitated guitars of all times. And not just our body shapes, but things like the shape of the headstock, that open book design or mustache kind of design, the split diamond inlay that you'd find on the Les Paul Customer, the ES-355, or that crown, or some people call it pineapple inlay, that you'd find on the 335 or the Gibson SG. All of those innovations and design elements are trademarks of Gibson. Why does this matter? Well, for a few reasons. People ask us a lot about forgeries and, co and counterfeit guitars, you know, often of lower craftsmanship coming in from overseas. But there's some common misconceptions about what a forgery is and what trademark infringement is. Any copy of any one of those designs that we've named is in fact by definition a counterfeit Gibson guitar. What that means for a couple different people. To the manufacturers out there, we want you to know that you've been warned. We're looking out and we're here to protect our iconic legacy and the designs that we've created over generations. To all the people in the film and television and commercial industry, Reach out to us, we want to work with you. Stop taping over the logos on the headstocks. By the way, that's not enough to, to get out of a trademark infringement anyway. Contact us, we wanna work with you. We wanna be partners with you. We wanna help bring authenticity to your projects. And this isn't about us trying to be bullies or trying to stifle the boutique marketplace. This is about protecting our legacy. 125 years of innovation and relevance in, in music. It's worth protecting and it's our job and we will continue to fight to protect our intellectual property. And to all the players out there, what does this mean? Well, it goes back to what we started talking about, being original and playing authentic. Gibson's been investing money in our factories, in our team of people working, in the content that we're creating to make the Gibson experience the best and make the best guitars we've made in 125 years. And it's our goal that for the next 125 years coming, that will be the most relevant the most loved and most played guitar brand in the world. Be original, play authentic, and remember, only a Gibson is good enough. It's not on the headstocks. 